All right, friends, today we're playing some Super Mario World. It's definitely what we're playing. We're just gonna do, you know, a very normal playthrough of Super Mario World, and we're gonna have a timer on it. It's just gonna be a good time, so let's let's do it. Just reset the console real quick, and uh, away we go. Boot up our speed run. Just have a nice, nice playthrough of Super Mario World. Here goes timer. All right. Just your average playthrough of Super Mario World. Just gonna see how quickly we can beat Dino Plains 2, sorry, Yoshi's Island 2, my bad. It's been a long time, might be a little rusty. Might be not the best gameplay you've ever seen from me. I think we want Yoshi, he's good in the speed run, right? I think, I think I saw this in any percent. You get Yoshi. Maybe we try and get Cloud. I don't know. Maybe get an orb. We're gonna do something. Can't really make up my mind. What do you guys think? What should we do? I think I know what I wanna do. Let's do, let's do this. Yep, let's do this. Let's do this. <laughs> okay. Let's play Super Mario Bros. instead, because I'm much better at that game. <laughs> All right. <laughs> now we're playing Super Mario Bros. inside Super Mario World. And it is all thanks to this. Or more specifically, This. So, this is a task replay device. Um, shoutouts to P P4 Plus 2, by the way, for the task that just played on my console. And shoutouts to Onosaurus for these devices. He sells them if people want to tinker around with t playing tasks back on their consoles. As you can see, you can do all sorts of crazy things in certain games. And uh, this is his website. Uh, go check it out. Right now he is selling ones that look like this. Uh, but pretty soon, I have sort of a beta one, but there will be a new model that looks more like this. Uh, it has a screen with like UI, it lets you pick what task you want to play off of a USB stick. And it's all very good and fun. So today, <laughs> let's mess around a little in Super Mario Bros version of Super Mario World and see what we can do. <laughs> Plug in my actual controller now. <clears throat> okay, so as you've probably noticed, there's uh, some irregular sound effects for this game. All of the sound effects are pulled from the Super Nintendo, not the NES. So we're getting some All-Stars type sound effects. Should go up a little bit. We'll make some more sounds. Oh yeah. But it's definitely Super Mario Bros. And I'll prove it. Let's try some glitches out. Yep, definitely Super Mario Bros. Definitely Super Mario Bros. Can I hit a flagpole glitch? Oh no. <laughs> Maybe next try. So yeah, for those who don't know how this works, certain games there's a really powerful glitch you can do called arbitrary code execution. And um, it's basically like there's some sort of way to really uh, well, you just get total control of the game. There's some like very uh, vulnerable thing in the game that you can take full advantage of and start writing your own stuff into the, into the game. And Super Mario Bros is only you know 40-ish kilobytes big, so if you can if you can get control of a game and start filling out 40 kilobytes, you can make it play Super Mario Bros. So that's how we're doing this. Oops. 
Okay, uh, first and foremost, we need to go and check what the minus world will be. Because this isn't going to be the normal minus world. <laughs> Normally, the minus world exists because it starts reading, starts reading data outside of the normal place it looks for level data. But now, level, or like, data is totally different on this cartridge right now than on actual SMB1 cartridge. Okay, 5-3. Looks like the minus world on this is 5-3. <laughs> Good stuff. Wait, wait, wait. That means, oh yeah. Wait, <laughs> I got saved. <laughs> okay, so. You have to kill the Goomba or else that platform despawns, but I got saved by the bullet bill. That was incredible, dude. Um, this has a flagpole. I got so excited that it was a flagpole stage uh, because it means I can go to minus two. So there's more than just minus one. What's minus two? Oh, underground 4-4? Okay. Wait, this is this is like minus, uh, minus three of uh, FDS. Minus world. Oops. Which means, yeah, you come over here, you do the clip, right? Except you don't be Big Mario. <laughs> okay, well. <laughs> wow, minus world ending world record. Crazy, we did it, guys. <laughs> it's only two levels instead of three. And that's it, we beat the game. Now we can so <laughs> now we can go to world eight. Good job. Okay. Ooh. This. I hope this isn't a problem. Um. <laughs> okay. So by request, I actually got them to add a reset, uh, like button combination in. So if I push start and select, it resets the game. And I really hope it didn't keep it in quest two. <laughs> Okay, awesome. Good job. Thank you so much, P4 plus two. <laughs> we we uh we the reset works perfectly, and uh, yeah. So now I can do attempts. I can do speed runs. I can try and get sub five. Or I actually don't know if this is going to be the same speed or slight differences might make it not uh like faster or slower. Who knows? But yeah, now I can I can just reset and try and get a sub five or whatever. Um, is there anything else we want to try? Let me mess around for a little bit longer. I want to do some more glitches, like black pole glitch, bullet bill glitch. Oh yeah, so the between pipe transitions seem slower, so sub five might be hard. Dang, I keep pushing early. I muted my stream alerts the other day. Sorry. Let's check them out. Panda, thank you for the sub. Prime sub. Diabolic, thanks for the seven months. And Proto Man, thank you for the three months. Can you buy this? Yeah, you can buy the device that lets you do it at that website. Whoops. <clears throat> Ouch. Wait, I wanted to hear the one-up sound. I gotta follow it. Is the ace possible RTA? No. That's why in order to do something like this or like several other possible things, uh, you wanna, or you like need this device because, um, okay, well, <laughs> Let me take a step back. This could be possible RTA. Uh, people like Seth Bling, and there's probably some others, but he's the one that immediately comes to mind. They do this sort of thing. They, like in real time, they set it all up and make the code happen perfectly. But it takes forever, because you're writing like bit by bit. Um, in order to do it in not forever and with no <laughs> like, there's, there's tons of human error possibly involved in that too, so 
Uh, it's a lot easier to play around with something like this with the device. Kate, thank you so much for the 10 gift subs. That's a ton. Yet again, a bunch of gift subs. Thank you so much. Can this work in emulator? Yeah, you could you could just run uh, the TAS file on an emulator, and that's what TASs are normally done on. But this device is specifically so that you can do them on console, and it's really crazy because a lot of times, anytime you've seen a, a TAS, you've probably just seen a video of it, right? And that's all it is to you. It's just a video. But when you play it back on your console, it's crazy. It's like you're watching it and like. This is my childhood Super Mario World cartridge I'm playing right now, right? <laughs> like, I'm just playing Mario World that I played as a kid, but it's Super Mario Bros. right now. Like, that's a really crazy experience. And yeah, on other places you might have seen something like this is on Games Done Quick Marathons. They'll, they'll usually have a task block where something crazy happens. They make Twitch chat appear inside a game. They play color a dinosaur or whatever they do. <laughs> and uh, this is the same device that they use. And uh, what else was I gonna say about that? Can't remember. What was the- there was something else I wanted to- Oh, oh! Also in the practice rooms of GDQ, sometimes they just have a, uh, a task going on a console. And so you walk by, and just on this random unattended CRT, you're like, Why is it playing the Mario 64 120 star task <laughs> all by itself? Or even like, watch for rolling rocks in 0 A presses, or 0.5 A presses. Um, that was playing at a GDQ once, and everyone was like, at one point everyone was like, come here guys, come here, you gotta see, it's about to, to finish. And Mario, after building up speed for several hours, flew to the star at the end. We, we got to see it do that on a real console. Oh, it didn't make a sound there. That was weird. <laughs> Okay, let me try and get Bullet Bill Glitch. Well, no! <laughs> Dang it! He didn't even let me try! I missed killing the top one too. Here, let me die and continue. I wanna try and hit Bullet Bill Glitch. Wait, <laughs> why'd I get so many lives? Okay, whoa, look at that bullet bill. Oh, the first frame they spawn, they're always facing to the right? But then, okay, that was a rare, <laughs> fun little thing. <laughs> you only because I died could you even see it. I think that was weird. Okay, so hold B, push start. Okay, yeah. <laughs> okay, I'll do one more attempt at bulldog glitch, and then I'll do actual speedruns. I mean, 
<laughs> You're actually right, GTAs. I should just do it in runs because um, this isn't like playing on Animal Crossing where I was very limited by different controller and stuff. Like, this feels totally normal, so I could get a 457 run. That's what I should just go for anyway. <laughs> Will the speedruns go under Mario World or SMB1 on the leaderboard? Yeah, uh... <laughs> like, the list of console- the list of platforms you can play SMB1 on the leaderboard, it's like, NES! Wii Virtual Console, you know, all the different ones, and then it's like Super Mario World. <laughs> I don't know why I keep going in the pipe, by the way. Okay, try again. No, not again. Go, I, it, it, it's not even fair. It's not even letting me. I give up. <clears throat> Let's just do it in runs. First I'll get what should be like a sub five and then I'll try and get a 457 type run. <clears throat> okay. Uh, I don't know why I, I almost hit reset on the console out of habit. Okay, here we go. First speed run of Super Mario Bros. Inside Super Mario World. This should take 29.7 seconds for the first level. But yeah, it seems like the pipe transitions are a bit longer. We'll see what we come out to. So it should transition now. So it's a little behind. Well, it'll be interesting to, to see blah. it'll be interesting to see if the patterns are the same because like you can confirm Oh, yeah, the, this trick works. So the physics are exactly the same, but like if you get the exact same hammer bro patterns <laughs> You have to really know the game just to even confirm that Not just playing regular SMB1? Does it sound like regular SMB1? <laughs> just, just, it, just listen to the audio for a second. You'll notice something is different. <laughs> Thank you, Sheesh. What's up, please? Yeah, I don't know. The thing is, I don't know how the loading times affect the frame rule exactly. Like, is it just frozen in time during those, or what? Yeah, I'm a solid, like, three seconds slow at this point. <laughs> or maybe two, but... I think I'll just be that anyway, Mav, because I don't think I pushed start fast enough on the title screen. I don't know, we'll see. Wait. <laughs> the transition... Uh, it was right according to the coin flash, but like the fanfare is longer in this game, I guess. Dude, bullet bill glitch frame rule. Yeah, it is. I 
at slow shot. Come on. Oh, coin toss, man. <laughs> we would have been on 457 pace, but really like 502 or something. But we had to go for it. Whoops. Hey, BR man, thanks for the 54 months. Ah, uh, hardest pattern. Could have gone a little lower, but I feel like I might have died anyway. Let's go for flagpole glitch. sure I'm not sure what that was maybe C40 or whatever no that's not how muscle memory works med ting muscle memory means I don't have to think about how to push the jump button every time I want to jump it doesn't mean I don't need to see where to jump Okay. Pixel perfect. Good stuff. Yeah, the color palette looks very similar to emulator to me. Wow. Come on, Bowser. He made a really interesting sound. <laughs> Alright, we'll do double death this time, though. We can't get the perfect run on the first run. We need to leave some time to save. Although I didn't make splits, so... <laughs> we can't get that satisfying, like, one minute green split or whatever. I don't know what I was doing. No, there's no input delay. Because, uh, yeah, it's just, it's just SMW. <laughs> All right, we got the double death. I love the bridge breaking sound. <laughs> that was awesome. Thank you, Mario. You're welcome. You have no idea. You would not believe what I went through to get here, Princess Peach. You would not believe it. <laughs> you were really hard to find. Okay, so once again, we just start select, and boom, we're here. We can go again. Here, let me change. <clears throat> um, now this should, yeah, better color when I'm finished. <laughs> Yeah, during the demo sound effects is really funny. Why did the intro kill Mario? Uh, the intro always kills Mario, except it doesn't. It's supposed to. It actually um, desyncs because of the, co the coin toss mechanic. So this is the normal intro. He gets hit by that Goomba, kills that, gets hit by this one. But the coin toss makes you bounce on enemies, like either the first or second frame that you interact with them. So every time this plays, I'm pretty sure it flips coin toss. And uh, he's going to bounce on the Goomba a frame later. And then it desyncs him. Yep, now he bonks into that wall. So now he's all messed up. There's literally just like a task desync, like the exact same concept in the intro for Super Mario Bros, which is really funny. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> Here we go, another another attempt. We gotta do better than 622 or whatever I got. I think we can get about 502. 
Even if we play 457 level, but we'll see. Let's try a flagpole glitch. Nope. But I think I just didn't even waste time. And this is inside Super Mario World. Here, let me update the title. Speedrunning. SMW. I couldn't hit update. Rip. <clears throat> First I wrote SMW and I was like, no, I'll type it all out. And then I was like, nah, I'm running out of time. <laughs> Oops. Okay, update. Uh, I already went to the minus world. It does 5-3 and then it does underground 4-4, which is the same as minus three on FDS. Dang, I'm gonna hit that. I'm gonna hit that one of these times. Okay, I'll go, yeah, I'll go for the, the clip here. Easy enough. Oh, whoops, I missed the jump. <laughs> oh no, I went too far. Well, I did the clip though. <laughs> That's what's important, right? Thank you, Wes. Thanks for the 50 more months, dude. Okay, try again. The music doesn't start immediately, so I push I push start on the timer, and I'm like, wait, it's not right, but it, it's fine. That was fast enough that if I get the flagpole glitch, I should save it. No. Keep doing... I don't know if I'm doing AFO or what. What part of SMW can you play SMB1 from? I mean, I don't know <laughs> specifically where they write it to, but... How, how big actually is SNES RAM? Because... They probably just write it in there. They only need 40 kilobytes. Snatch Ram's 128. There you go. glitch work? Yes, bullet bill glitch works in Super Mario Bros. 1, which is what I'm playing. <laughs> this is, this is completely identical. I'm literally playing Super Mario Bros. 1. Other than sound and the level transitions and, you know, any other differences. <laughs> oh, nice info command from last, last thing. Confused? What's what's there to be confused about? I'm just playing some Super Mario World. Whoops. Whoops. <laughs> I 
I can't explain it, but pipe jumps almost feel easier. Like, when, every time I do a pipe jump, I feel like I have so much space to work with. But I know it's a, it's not any different. <laughs> yeah, we just convinced everyone that the name of this game was Super Mario World. Like, look, there's the power lights on on my Super Nintendo. Super Mario World is in. Alright, if the bullet shoots, I'm gonna go for it, because this run's already not perfect. Bullet? Bullet. Bro, coin toss every time. I don't even know if I would have gotten it, but I would have at least liked the chance at it. <laughs> no, where did you get SMB1 without lag? I'm sure if I go to 6-4 and shoot a bunch of fireballs, it will probably lag. Well, I mean, I don't know, but... Oh, that was for sure the setup, I think. Okay, we should, well, there's a bunch of transitions in this stage, so it might slow us down, but I think I should be able to get like an 04 or something, I don't know. Maybe it was 08. I can't remember the math at this point. <laughs> I don't remember what time I entered. <laughs> oh, Bismuth. <laughs> yeah, it's... This nest sound <laughs> is a bit off-putting at first. Alright, Bowser, please. Nice, let's go. Good old 509. We got the sub 510, not too bad. I think I can probably still take about five seconds off. But we'll see, we'll see what I can get. <laughs> World record 20 years ago. There it is! There it is! Fireworks to celebrate. We got the flag glitch. Confirmed. Possible. <laughs> Thank you, Super Hands. 508. <laughs> That's funny. No bonus music on the bike? Why would I have bonus music? It's Super Mario Bros. Not Super Mario Bros. All Stars. I wanted to uh, show the inputs, by the way. Wow. <laughs> Let's go. I wanted to show the inputs um, when it was doing the arbitrary code execution, but running it through my input display, I think it couldn't send them fast enough or something. It, it didn't do it right. Can we do this now? I don't know. <laughs> I was about to about to do a mid 456. Thank you. 
Leaper, thank you so much for the six months. Hope you like the invincibility leap. <clears throat> 42 warp down sky. I think the water section looks really pretty. differences? No, other than the colors are a bit different. Isn't that crazy? We're playing Super Mario Bros inside Super Mario World and I knew that a hammer bro was going to jump. Like the levels on levels here are just crazy. <laughs> Can we fast excel? Mm, we can excel. <laughs> Wasn't the fastest. It might have saved a frame or something. All right, come on Bowser, let me get a PB. Let's go, 505, we're making good progress. We're pushing down the SMB1 inside SMW, any percent, world record. <laughs> yeah, this is inside SMW. Uh, here, let me just rerun it for people that weren't here at the start so you can see it again. <clears throat> And then I'll do more runs. We gotta get a 503 or something. <clears throat> gotta put the right controller in the right controller. See, look, there's a cool little screen that lights up. Now you do. You're like, oh, I need to delete the save. So you're just like, boom, pick the task you want. This one is called delete save. So now it's just gonna delete it frame perfectly. <laughs> Here it goes. Wait, it didn't go. <laughs> Here it goes. <laughs> this time for sure. Probably worth giving a shout out to Master Jun. Oh. Okay. I didn't, sure, yeah. Master Jun is the uh, one that did the actual task of this then. Very good. You wrote the payload, but he wrote, he did the gameplay, right? Okay, cool. Are you so freeze? Where? I missed them. Wow. 
My favorite part is this right here. Oh wait, maybe it already happened. The shell like slides down the wall. <laughs> and Onosaurus made the cables. There it is. Dude, you, <laughs> you should see the screen. There's the, the screen has an input display too. And uh, on the, the payload part, it's just like, like so many things. <clears throat> Controller back in. All right. Thought this was credits warp? Yeah, Mario World has the best credits. They put like an entire new game in it. <laughs> so within every copy of SMW is SMB1. Within every 41 kilobytes is SMB1. <laughs> Yeah, this is not every copy of SMW is personalized. This is every copy of Super Mario World can be personalized. No, it doesn't have any input dis input delay. No, there's no gameplay differences. <laughs> the, the sound effects make you feel like there are. They might make you play differently, but the game itself plays normally. We did that earlier, Elijah. If you missed Minus World or any of the opening stuff, you'll just have to catch the YouTube video. First time watching a Super Mario speedrun. <laughs> this is a pretty unusual one. Nice. Try again. Wait. Ugh, NES start and select buttons. <laughs> Wait, can I not do untitled screen? I don't know. Why does it say Super Mario World? Because that's what we're playing. Yeah, actually, are there any, uh... Is there any, like... Quintessential video for arbitrary code execution that's, like, the best place to point people to? Isofreeze? Do you, do you have a video on it? On explaining this retro game mechanic? I know Bismuth has one for Super Mario Bros. 3. Can't remember how explicit it is about Ace itself. I know it's very explicit about that specific Ace. Yeah, I know he also has one because you mentioned it in the video. <clears throat> you have an old one for Mario World? Okay.
ended. <laughs> Pong and snake. Yeah, sure. You can even, uh... Right now, if you want, while I'm running. <laughs> I don't know. Well. Let me just hurry and get a clean run, and then I'll let you hop on. Motivation to get it over with. Uh, identical, boys burnt. Sure, yeah, that's fine. We can we can get everybody on. So, you just have to get... Okay, here's the thing. You just have to get to the point where you have what's called total control. So you don't have to be, like, explicitly, Oh, if I put this shell here, it lets me write, like, one thing. You, you get enough stuff in place to where different buttons and... This will be better when they hop on, because they know better, but... Um, you get to the point where... You have basically gotten enough control to where you just start writing code by pushing buttons. And you have all the buttons available, like up, down, left, right, select, start, Y, B, X, A, L, R. Plus you have controller number two doing inputs as well. And when you have all of that, you can write it pretty fast. When it's a task doing inputs every frame. Alright, well, <clears throat> made a little error, but this would still be 458 pace on normal SMB1. Thanks, Yudia, that's helpful. Yeah, you basically just like... <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that frame rule, I think, is if you're like two or three frame rules late to 8.3, I was only one or two, but then I'm delayed by the title screen. Dang. I should have recognized it. Let's just not mess up this time. There's like no way I'm gonna start first frame rule after the reset. <laughs> At the point where we're going for the good run. The select button on this controller is just awful or something. I can't do it, man. <laughs> okay. He would be hyped to get a run with Bullet Bug Witch 2. I haven't gotten that yet. But let me at least get 458 caliber run and then. Well, it, it's not a frame perfect trick because it doesn't matter like when you do it, but you do have to push them the same time. Which normally, like if it was on 
LR or something, it'd be probably a lot easier, but select start on all, but specifically this Super Nintendo controller is just hard to push. <laughs> Man. Yeah, normally I use NES. I, I saw your tweet, Bismuth, but I... Well, I've heard of it, but I don't know what it is. <laughs> Come on. Okay. Okay. Let me... Let's just get it. Let's just get it right now. Man, if you think this is a whole new level, you really need to watch Mr. Wint's Pokemon Yellow Test. Um, that is the craziest ace I've ever seen, I think. I can't remember what game it starts in. Is that, wait, 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 wait. Is that a Super Mario World task? Oh no, wait, I just said it's Pokemon Yellow. What am I thinking? <laughs> I literally knew what it was already. I just got excited at the possibility of being able to play it. Yeah, <laughs> even after already knowing what Ace was and seeing several tasks with it, when I saw the Pokemon Yellow one, like, I didn't be I thought it was not real for a long time. Mostly because of the SpongeBob part, because I was like, how could you possibly do this? But then I learned that there are Game Boy cartridges that played SpongeBob, so then it all made sense. What's up, Sea Bear? Runs are going well. Just uh, going some for P going for some PB attempts in Super Mario World. Having a pretty good attempt session. Yeah, sorry if I already gave away like one of the craziest parts of it, but still the rest of it is like plenty and I didn't totally give it away. Seabird, thank you so much. Thank you for all the bits, 1500. Um, no, I actually am graduated now. So it is going well. <laughs> uh, computer science. MD, although my final professor wanted to make us all one. What's up, Carl? Thanks for the 16 months, TBH.
final classes. Um, one was in two parts, which is the one I was referring to, where you had to you had to build a virtual machine, and then you had to write a compiler, and those fed off each other in the end. You had to like you had to get you had to read a file with a bunch of errors and catch every single one perfectly, and uh, then eventually generate all of the assembly and run it on your virtual machine. Code block, thank you so much for the sub block. Thanks for the three gift subs, man. And then uh, my other main final class was AI, except it was really lame because there was a teacher that taught AI for several years, or more than several, like a bunch. <clears throat> and he did a bunch of cool projects like, you had to do, like, a chess game and, like, other cool things. And then he was, like, gone for the one semester I took that class, and the replacement teacher didn't do, like, anything. It was all just, like, answer this garbage from the textbook. No cool projects or anything. Thanks, so cool. No splits, just practice runs? Oh, no. These are real runs. We're going for world record in Super Mario World SMB 1%. Dude! Oh, I didn't want to go too slow and get the bad bullet shot. Dang it. <laughs> I tried so hard. Landed too far to the right. Yeah, I could have done AI plays with SMB1. Like, we did one group project, but ev like everything we were supposed to do was in a tiny little box. It's like, you have to do exactly this. I don't know, it's kind of lame. Whoops. P4 plus two, thank you for the prime, man. I should be subbing to you. <laughs> You're the reason we're here. What is the world record? I got 505 earlier, I think. <laughs> but this, this version is slower than normal, so that was more like a 501, probably. <clears throat> Awesome seeing me run SMB1. <laughs> Anything to get out of playing Super Mario World. Just kidding. We're playing Super Mario World. Uh, Sea Bear, I mostly do C languages and Java. That's what most, most of my experience is in. Ona, thank you. Again. <laughs> I should be subbing to you. Thanks, S Black. have I ever said I would never play the game ever again, Spyro speedruns. If you go to my goals list, you can even see things of it that are on there. But I can't play every game at once. So just because I have played SMB1 a hundred thousand million attempts <clears throat> over several years, like, I... I 
A lot of people want to see that, but like... There's all the other games I haven't played. So they have more... It, even more of a right to say, why don't you play them? Defiz, thank you for the Prime sub. <clears throat> Oh yeah, I didn't notice until now, but the uh, there's only one row of blocks on the bottom of the screen instead of two. Probably just resolution stuff. two games at once? You're right. That's why I play 2J and I play Billy Hatcher. <laughs> what am I playing this on? Playing this on Super Nintendo. Super Mario World cartridge. Sorry, Raider fan. <laughs> I misread. That's funny. That was like... <laughs> For some reason, I like couldn't say words when I was trying to answer that question. So <laughs> I gave like a terrible response, but... Yeah. I've also had to answer the question, like, a thousand times this year, so... Don't know what to say at this point. Have to play my own little mini-game in my world where I try and answer it differently every time. Really? Come on, man. Words are not easy sometimes, especially when <laughs> in the background I'm speedrunning Super Nintendo SMB1. Nice Inferno. Or Infern... Infern... I guess that's an L. Infernal Magician. Evil Hope, thank you for the Prime sub. Here, I'll try and get a good run real quick. I'm getting very close to good run. It's hard to focus enough to do that, but... I'll make sure I focus when I... <laughs> when I get to World 8, then I'll care. So much potential, yeah. It, it's like the most ridiculous thing. And if you don't know, the same person, Mr. Wint, um, found an improvement in SMB1 Warpless. So, the 4-4 frame rule that's in the Warpless task of this game, he found that improvement. Thank you. 
I don't know. <laughs> Probably because most- I, I should have made one, I guess. Most of the time I have one, so... I, I actually like that people are typing it. it it's a bit embarrassing because it's saying the wrong thing, but... <laughs> it means I've trained the stream well. They, they've come to expect to be well informed. <laughs> but I'm not doing the best this stream, maybe. Okay, perfect speed run. Good stuff. <laughs> oh, come on, Bismuth, you spoiled the music quiz. <clears throat> okay, we're gonna go bajoo, bajoo, bajoo. Oh, never mind, we actually started first frame rule this time. What? Dang it, dude. Well, still... Should be fine. Still sub 5 pace, and I don't think I have that hammer bro this time. the gameplay, but you can't put your finger on it. It was this frame rule? How? Last time I got this, I was on a different frame rule in 8-2. I don't understand. Maybe I went slower on the pipe jump. I need to learn to recognize that one, but normally I just know if it's that one. Oh well. Okay, that's first frame reel for sure. Alright, this is it. This is the run. We're getting mid 458 pace run, and we'll see exactly what the time difference is. You know, we actually could find the exact time difference because um, we could find the pattern, <laughs> the Bowser pattern, and it would tell me, oh, this run would be 458.56 or whatever. And then <laughs> we could check how long it took on here and find out the exact difference. Setup's genius. Yeah. Oh. As with everything, there's always going to be tons of bystanders that are very misinformed. Like, how many silly YouTube comments are there about speedruns? But add tool assisted on top of the speedrun, and there's already going to be all sorts of terribly wrong ideas. But you can see, the two assisted speedruns are just really cool ways to like show what's possible in a game. And they're really entertaining and fun to mess with. And this is the sort of thing that they can do, in addition to just normal playthroughs that are like, insane. Can't you just appreciate it for what it is, Mavine? That's how it lets you know you're on Super Nintendo.
Yeah, like... Yeah. It's really hard if you have, like, no experience in any kind of computer science anything to understand that, like, everything is just information, and if you can pass it in some form, then you can do all sorts of things. That's how Wi-Fi works. That's how your internet... Well, those are the same. But, like, they, all, they come in all sorts of different... by all sorts of different means. Like, when you get fiber, it's like... It's like shooting light through pipes or something, isn't it? Well, that was really weird, and I don't even know what happened. <laughs> I've never bounced off the Koopas. I don't know what what that was. <laughs> yeah, glass pipes. Uh oh. Okay. Okay, Onosaurus. Yeah, sorry. I've been I've been trying to dial in and get this done before it got too late for you. But I've been I've been slow on the speed run. This can get a 503. So that's pretty good. This is perfect except the little bit of time loss in 8-2 and of course we didn't get to attempt a bullet bill glitch either. So this could be one second faster. We got wall jump though. We got a good turnaround though. Okay, okay, okay. Bowser, please. Potaboo, please. Bowser, no. Come on, man. That was like a high 458. I'm so sad, man. Bowser. We have to try again. Yeah, I don't know exactly how much I lost in 8-2, but... No. That was either, um... 458.9 or 459.3. Oh, I didn't pay attention to judges. Then it was either 459.3 or 459.7. Or six. <clears throat> the problem is, if I keep getting to that A2 frame rule with the bullet bill pattern, <laughs> I'm gonna keep wanting to go for a bullet bill glitch every time. It's gonna delay getting the run. SMB1, but with SMW physics? <laughs> yeah, we did the opposite of that last week. We did SMW, but with SMB1 physics. We've played SMB1 inside Mario World in two different ways in the past few days. This is not hacked SMW. Is not this is vanilla SMW cartridge. Hmm. 
Just imagine, like, you know your clipboard on your computer? <laughs> you know how you can copy stuff onto your clipboard? Imagine there's this clipboard inside Mario World that they figured out how to just put stuff onto. And really complicated series of inputs put SMB1 onto it, and then they clicked play. <laughs> Insanely oversimplified, but <laughs> nice clippy emote. speedrun the game and watch. I already did that in October. Or wait, maybe it was December. I don't know, but it's on there. Oh yeah, I got... Good thing I recognized. I got the pattern where it wouldn't even give a shot. Parks, thank you for the five months. Yeah, I know Seth Bling, he had like... He got a setup to where... He could use this special Super Nintendo controller that had a bunch of extra buttons and it let him like type the payload in onto his computer. It would be interesting. I thought about maybe trying to do that with this. Figure out what all that would take. Red Fox I, I don't I don't know if you're joking or not. That sounded like a very genuine question, but it's like the main thing that I'm known for, so I don't know how to take it. Oh no. One pixel short, man. Dang it. We go again. We gotta get, we gotta get the run, man. Wait, we gotta be Luigi. Haven't seen Luigi yet. Our boy. Just SMW. Maybe I should have set up a camera on the console or something. Has the sound from All Stars because that's what that's what P4 Plus told it to have. And it was easier than making NES sounds. Nintendo consoles.
Well, I don't have like N64 disk drive. But I have FDS, I have Virtual Boy. Virtual Boy was in GDQ. I can't remember if it was the last one or two ago, but they did Virtual Boy Mario World, or uh, Wario Land. Mario Land? Wario World? The Wario game. Virtual Boys are like, can't remember if it's like 90, 120, somewhere in there. <clears throat> He's gonna hop on in a bit to explain Reesey Boy, so. All your questions. Hold on. Okay, can't go for bullet bug glitch this time. Never mind, we got <laughs> we happened to get the super fast early frame rule shot. Hopefully after this run, P4 Plus can hop on. Because this is the run! We got 1 Ted 59 coins. Okay, let's see what time we can get. Looks like I'm gonna get maybe a low or mid 502. Probably mid. I'm just like guessing how much time it transitions at. Okay. Not the fastest, but last time was too short, so I didn't want to do that again. Dang it! Rip 502. Bowser RNG manipulation. 504! Did I already get that? I can't even remember. Dang it! <laughs> that was so close, except the one mistake in the water. Okay, but let's have P4 Plus hop on again, and then I'll do more runs. Or hop on, and then I'll do... I'll try and get, like, 457. With the bonk, yeah. Yo. All right, is, uh, is audio actually working? They should be able to hear you. Can you hear me? I can. Hello. Good stuff. Hello. Hey, all right, there we go. Sorry, I had to mute the stream because otherwise I was going to be hearing myself with a weird delay. Right. Okay. All right. Go for it. Tell the people all that they need to know. All right, so I think we should cover the first and most common question first. Yes, this is Super Mario All-Stars music. That was chosen specifically because emulating the NES's type of audio engine on the Super Nintendo would be really difficult, especially in the time constraints when this was originally developed. It was just not going to be feasible to try to replicate the NES audio engine. The Super Nintendo processes audio very differently. Um, so 
the choice was made to rip the sound engine out of Super Mario All-Stars because it had a lot of sound effects intended to be used for Super Mario Brothers already. And then during the upload process, we actually upload the audio engine first to replace the one that Super Mario World comes with. And then we upload the actual game. So that's why we have Super Mario All-Stars music. Um, there are a few areas where, because of time constraints, uh, I did not actually have the time to work out all the details for sound effects. And I recall it was actually in the Bowser area. I think I just gave up on one of the sound effects. I think it was the bridge breaking specifically. And I ended up playing like a thunder and lightning sound effect at the same time as another one to emulate the breaking sound. And it was just good enough. Very good. So that's why that sounded so wildly different than probably even <laughs> Super Mario All-Stars. So with the most common question out of the way, um, let me kind of take it people through the basic steps of what's happening in this ace from start to finish. So inside of Super Mario World, there are quite a few glitches that allow you to basically take control of the game. And the goal of all of these comes down to trying to execute the eight byte section of memory where the controller input lies. This is a contiguous block, so it's all in a row. You have eight bytes. And once you manage to get the game to crash in such a way that you hit those eight bytes, those eight bytes can represent an area that we can execute code directly from the controller. I'm going to kind of hand wave over a little bit of the complicated stuff because it's not too important. But what we generally do is first, you try loading one byte at a time, and you start writing it into memory. It's a very slow process, and it has to happen over multiple frames, because we only have eight bytes to read something and then go back to the beginning of those eight bytes. Um, so it's a very slow process. So what we do is we write that little bit into a small block of memory that is intended to, when we execute it, it will then be able to read many bytes at the same time. We call this the bootloader. There's actually multiple stages we go through, each one progressively allowing us to read data faster and faster and faster. By the time we get to the ending one, we're able to read at, at this time, what we consider to be full speed for, for the bot. We've since done way faster. Um, but at the time, it was Gosh, I can't remember exactly what it was back then. This, sorry, this was done back in like 2014. So I'm, I'm going back a ways here. Um, it was a few hundred button presses per frame. Um, it was, so it was a pretty good, pretty good rate. Um, and then once we started being able to read bytes at the really rapid pace, first the uh, Super Mario uh, World sound engine was disabled. Then we upload the uh, Super Mario All-Stars sound effects and music data and samples, etc. And then the uh, audio engine itself is actually uploaded and then is put into a basically wait state. Basically, it's off, but it's there. Um, on the Super Nintendo, audio is actually processed on a separate processor and it has separate RAM. It's a separate 64 kilobyte section. So once we've transferred everything over there, we can now feel free to effectively use all of the Super Nintendo's main RAM for the actual payload. Um, inside of this payload, the first thing we do is we copy over a converted set of graphics. Uh, we actually, for making it easier, converted this, the graphics to a 4-bit per pixel format that was used already by Super Mario World. This was purely just for making things slightly easier. It does not actually change 
things in the end. Um, so this block was copied over, copied into video memory, and then we can forget about it. Those were the graphics that you saw on screen. Then, and this is the final, final bit of the actual payload portion, the actual Super Mario Brothers engine and game code was uploaded. This is a single block that was basically uploaded. Um, and then we just basically initialize the game more or less as it expects in the, the vanilla game. And at this point, the only real other complicated bits are what's actually different. What do we have to change in Super Mario Brothers? A lot of these are just really technical things to make the code run on the Super Nintendo. Um, because we're playing this game inside of a game that was already written, we can't overwrite ROM. That's not something we can do. So a lot of the things that Super Mario World has are not going to be compatible with Super Mario Brothers. So all the... At the end of every frame, something called an interrupt normally happens. That's what tells the game, hey, I need you to give me new graphics, update the screen, etc. Well, we can't use that because it would point to the original Super Mario World code where we want our code to run instead. So we actually had to do a lot of manual timing. This is why some of the transitions are a little longer in this version of the game because there was manual timing done and we erred on the side of caution uh, because this was intended to be used at GDQ. So we didn't want to risk something going crazy wrong if we did something weird. Uh, I think that we can actually close in on some of these, uh, and on some of these, uh, timing windows a little bit more, uh, now that we're dealing with, um, more stable bots and such, but at the time we didn't know how things would always behave consistently. Um... So that's why the transitions were longer. Uh, beyond that, the only other major change that had to be made was um, the NES has a different way of displaying graphics called a name attribute table. And basically we just had to take the data that the NES would have been trying to write to its video memory and intercept it and convert it to the Super Nintendo format on the fly. That's effectively all that was done to make the graphics work properly. Um, sound effects, instead of writing to the NES uh, registers, we just wrote, we basically just translated the sound effects to, and then used the Super Nintendo registers. It was a pretty one-to-one -one change out for the most part, with the exception of the bridge. Um, and beyond that, that is your high-level overview of how this ACE arbitrary code execution exploit actually works and how it was translated from the NES to the Super Nintendo. Um, and just for it, a little bit of bonus trivia, the Super Nintendo has what's called an emulation mode. It's basically useless for the concept of translating games from NES to the Super Nintendo. So uh, that was disabled. That actually would not have helped us in any way. Um, Little Brown asks, how many people worked on this? Um, so this was a long time ago. The actual code for Super Mario Brothers was done pretty much by myself. A small hacker um, from Super Mario World Central had originally converted the graphics. Um, there were people who, uh, Master June was the one who did the actual task work you see in Super Mario World. Um, there was very, uh, there was a lot of people involved in the testing phase of things, and, uh, there was a lot of work done on the development of the actual task replay hardware. But as far as the actual code, it was, that was done by myself. But there was probably about half a dozen of us actively working on the project as a whole. 
Yeah, just to interject for a quick second, and then I'll let you continue. I think at that time the task replay hardware was by True, correct? That at that. Time? I thought it, I'm I, in my head. I was thinking True, but I didn't want to misattribute it. But I'm 99% certain it was written by by True. Yeah, I think I think it was one or one and a half years later that Micro 500 did his. So yeah, I'm pretty sure this was played by True's. Yeah. Um. Definitely a huge shout out to for all the people who helped at the time test to this because there was a lot of testing that had to be done uh, for sure. Oh yeah, just quickly because in the chat, the main person you hear speaking uh, that's P four plus two. Uh, just I'm not sure if that was said at the beginning. And uh, I'm Onosaurus. I'll probably talk in a few minutes just to talk about the replay device pretty quickly. Um. Oh, where was I? Sorry, I actually remember we were doing I questions in chat. Um, there the have original, been a couple of people uh, asking if I they see. can get this. Now, for, for legal reasons, of course, this could not be distributed as a ROM. But are they able to get a replay file or not because it may have some embedded proprietary assets in it? Okay, so this is this is an interesting question. I'm going to fully caveat this with I am not a lawyer. That being said, on task videos, there is a an older version of this that exists there. Um, this newer version only has a bonus reset mechanism. Uh, so this whole project pretty much came across from a few, what was it, about two weeks ago. Uh, Onosaurus and Cosmic asked if we could hack in a quick reset feature so that you didn't have to replay the entire game uh, arbitrary code execution every time you wanted to reset. So the version on uh, task videos would not have this. However, this version, we might be able to find a way to upload this somewhere. I have to look into it, though. I don't think Cosmic would want me posting this directly in a stream. Let me put it that way, though. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Oh. Go check out Taz's videos <laughs> for it, I guess. Yeah, it's just because it is technically kind of in a gray water area as for whether or not you can distribute it without it being a copyright problem. Um, well, so the file you distribute is really just like... It's more or less like a text file that is interpreted as inputs, right? Yeah, so one could argue it's an art form uh, and falls under fair use. Um, but it's a very, very technical argument to be made, and I... Uh, hmm. Th this is something that isn't totally clear in the law and hasn't been totally decided in court and could be fought either way. It could easily be... Um, you could easily be sued for it, and you could easily defend it, and it would be interesting how they would rule. So yeah, it's kind of outside the scope of our knowledge bases. Hmm. I never even knew it was like that at all. Interesting. Well, I mean, it depends what's in it. Certainly if it was just, quote, normal button presses. Like, like if Cosmic, if you recorded your button presses... Oh, okay, I see button. what you're saying. But this, this yeah, writes the, the button code. button presses technically... Yeah, it technically mm. contains an encoded version of Super Mario Bros. Okay. 1 in it. So is it distributing a game or is it not distributing a game? It's difficult to say. I see. Pretty much. Um, did we have any did I miss any questions that were we think were kind of important to answer? Um, could you just you know, we've gotten very uh you know, more thorough explanation, but just like if someone's here and they still have no idea what arbitrary code execution is, could could you just give your best simplified version that you would give the average person asking? Cool. Okay. And really yeah. quick. Actually, I can give. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, you know, just really quick before this probably desyncs. Uh, I think Cosmic, you're playing a run that has a ninety percent chance of desyncing in Bowser's Castle. Just as a heads up, <laughs> okay. if that happens, you didn't do anything wrong. Okay. Ooh, that looks pretty. So let me give you the, the most basic summary of this. 
that is actually possible. We're playing a game in such a way that the game does something that it doesn't expect. The game doesn't know how to handle and respond to things and gets basically lost. And we gave the game new instructions to guide it back on the path. It just happened to be the, the instructions that we gave it were specially crafted to look and act identically to another game that was not the original game. Arbitrary code execution, as, it, as this is called, is a way for us to guide and use an existing game to run custom code. In this case, the custom code was Super Mario Brothers. Right. It's like the classic uh, turn it off and on again because, you know, when some device gets stuck, you just got to reset it. Well, in this case, we purposefully got it stuck in Super Mario Bros, basically. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a good way to put it. Um, you effectively... Let me, let me choose my words carefully here. You effectively cannot go back to Super Mario World right now until you restart the game. Uh, there is a very special level of caveats that if you reinitialize a lot of the hardware very carefully, you could. But it's effectively not viable to go back to Super Mario World anymore. Uh, let's see. <laughs> what yes, room does yeah. it desync in? Brief. I don't remember because I don't think I've ever run this one, but I oh, remember it's this one. Saying, <laughs> yeah, it's that one. Um, yeah, the, he was trying to do an 11. I think this is an 11 exit. I wasn't fully yeah. watching because uh, I was watching. Too. But yeah, we do have an 11 exit version that syncs, but this that version was obsoleted by this version. And the other version synced 100% consistently, and for some reason, this movie rarely syncs. We don't know why yet. There are a few. <laughs> Super Mario World is one of the most stable games we play, and yet, uh, on the when I say stable, I mean tasks. That's a whole other topic. Not every task just simply works all the time due to certain aspects of the console, certain variances. The game can be coded in a way where it may be waiting for an audio signal, like P4M over, simplifying. And that audio signal is governed by a different conductor. So it goes at a slightly different speed, and it may be going a little too fast one day, and it may be going a little too slow another day. And anyway, long story short, as stable as Super Mario World is, there are a couple of levels in which uh, the conductor for the CPU, the main processor, and the conductor for the sound processor can get out of sync with each other and it results in basically an off by one error, and this happens. Let's see. There was a question that I wanted to answer, and I don't know where I went. Uh, would a description of code segments in RAM help as a concept help? Um, not particularly, because this the game actually gets uploaded in almost one contiguous block. It's not broken apart outside of when I did the initial explanation. We do upload things in a couple pieces, doing audio first and then the game itself. But beyond that, that's only done as a technicality because of how the Super Nintendo works. It doesn't actually change the final version. Had I not done the audio portion, we would have actually had a version with just Super Mario World music. Uh, I do have those out in the wild, I think. Somebody made a video with it where, because I, I let them see that version. Uh, but yes, the, the there's no real concepts of segments in memory. And to address what Aaron Cam asked about how the game is running with so much RAM corrupted, uh, to be clear, the game is 100% corrupted at this point. There is there is nothing left in memory that represents Super Mario World. Um, the game is actually, ex uh, instead of executing in ROM, is 100% executing in RAM. It is in memory. So it's not fair to say that the RAM is corrupt per se. Rather... Super Mario World's RAM is simply not in a state where it's going to be used anymore. Uh, we don't touch any of the original Super Mario World code. 
so it doesn't actually matter. Um, can you do these injections on the NES Super Mario Brothers? So this is something we've tackled for a long time. We've poked around. I'm sure Cosmic might actually be honest. Uh, he might have some better intuition on this one than I, because he knows the game better. But in my humble opinion, I've never seen any evidence that would suggest arbitrary code execution vulnerabilities that exist inside of Super Mario Brothers. It's a pretty well-studied game, and for the size of the game that it is, I kind of would have expected something to have been found by this point if it was available. I'm still not even aware of any actual physical crash that is not a soft lock inside of Super Mario Brothers. Uh, you can crash the game. <clears throat> um, there's various ways to make the game lag, and when it lags, it does some weird behavior. Like, sometimes when you do the bullet bill glitch, uh, it makes a lag frame, and during that, I know... Sock folder looked into, oh, is there, is there ace potential here? And there's like, you can make a buffer overflow, but there's another buffer to catch it. And so no potential there. Uh, I know there is like a fastest crash test of this game and it goes into 1-2 and like breaks a bunch of blocks and does corruption that makes the game crash. Huh. Maybe I need to look into it again. Um, but it definitely is not something that i see happening in the foreseeable future anytime soon that's for sure yeah it's it's funny um the the closest that i've seen in terms of corrupting because you, you can corrupt the game in a not useful way i might have even corrupt the game in a way that gives yeah. you hate. i might have uh, even I misremembered the, whether the it does button. crash or not like i think i remember a crash test but it might just be corruption and not test or crash <clears throat> Please remind me who who is it who made the uh, Bowser's butts uh, test? That's Happy Lee's. Yeah, so I mean that's the closest I've seen where you cause so much lag that it corrupts memory and every sprite becomes Bowser's butt basically. <laughs> um, I think if you if you carefully search YouTube for like Mario One Bowser's <laughs> butt, I think you will. I think you will find the video. Just be careful. <laughs> Make sure it's on YouTube. I'll go brave it. Let's try and find it. Okay. Actually, we have the FM2, I think. Yeah, I could play it. I'd have to um, switch. Darcraft asks if the game has to be coded in assembly to do Ace. Uh, absolutely not. Um, that being said, the older games that were coded in assembly did tend to lean towards having more bugs that could allow this to be possible. Um, I can tell you, I am sitting on at least a couple of different games that have arbitrary code execution bugs waiting for whenever COVID is over enough to let GDQ happen again in person. So you can look forward to that. Um, but yeah, absolutely, it's not a requirement that the game be done in assembly. Uh, keep in mind that most likely when you're dealing with these payloads, you're going to be writing a lot of code in assembly. Uh, but that's just because you're trying to optimize it so much. And the Super Nintendo is not a very powerful CPU. It's running at, in your best case scenario, 3.58 megahertz. <laughs> this is, it's literally an, you know, an times order slower of than... magnitude yeah. slower. Yeah. Yeah, modern day process actually multiple orders uh, yeah in fact. yeah three orders uh Reese boy asks can you play doom on super mario world um no because it the game does more than would be viable there is a doom port uh, um to the super nintendo of but um the game uses an expansion chip that is not on the Super Mario World cartridge. It uses the Super Effects chip found in Yoshi's Island and others. And the game is much larger than would actually fit in memory, so it's just simply not viable. I'd like to add uh, a special shout out to Rasteri, who works with me on the replay device. He made a real 
NES cart, uh, NES, not SNES, NES cart running Doom. How is that possible? Well, he offloaded the graphics computations onto a Raspberry Pi. Um, but you can, if you Google Rasteri Doom NES, you'll find his write up on it. I actually have one of those carts. And it is a genuine cart that just has the. It has a certain bus to a Pi, which offloads the graphics calculations, and it really runs on the real NES. It's kind of cool. All right. Try not to tangent too yeah. much, so I'll try to not oh, go uh, too much yeah, actually, more into it. Speaking of, if you don't, because I should be going to bed momentarily, can I just give my two minutes real quick? Go ahead. Uh, yeah, just in case, just to complete the picture, what what P4 plus 2 has been talking about is the game itself. And then, you know, he did a fantastic job explaining, you know, how it was constructed and all the inputs that need to be pressed so quickly. The device that actually presses all of those inputs is called the TAS replay device. When you think of TASBOT, which you may have seen at, at GDQ, TASBOT is sort of the... Um, the avatar, you know, the, the robot who holds one of these devices that Cosmic is showing on stream. That is the actual replay device that does the the button presses. The one he's holding is my version. Uh, this is Onasaurus speaking. Um, you can, yeah, you can learn more at task.bot. That's our, uh, that's our website, which includes links to our Discord and the store where you can buy. I have like three of those left, and then I have a new version coming up. Um, to be clear, when this task was created originally, there, are, you know, I ride on the, I stand on the shoulders, or I, I come from, I don't know what the right expression is. There were many <laughs> amazing people before me, I should say. Um, True made the replay device that originally played this at GDQ, followed by Micro 500, who made some amazing replay devices for NES, Super NES, and the famous and very well received. Um, What's it called? I keep wanting to say Picto Chat. What's it? Uh, Brain Age. What? Brain Age. Brain Age. Thank you. Oh my God. Yeah, the the Brain Age, which was wonderful. Uh, then Total. Yes, the same Total who now does the Legend of Zelda and Super Metroid randomizer. Um, that Total uh, made a replay device, and then I sort of was inspired by them, and I took you know some code inspiration from them as well. All the replay device is, is a glorified controller. You as a human, you can press a button, you can release a button. All the fancy task replay device can do is press and release buttons. The difference is, is that it has the precision to do it perfectly, consistently, and reliably, and repeatably. And with our more modern payloads that are giving about 280 button presses per frame, there's 60 of those per second. Um, yeah, with two to four controllers. Actually, um, so anyway, uh, I'll let P4 take that. But yeah, P4 maybe can talk about two controllers versus four controllers on the SNES. But I just wanted to say, that's basically all it is. All it is is a glorified, it's basically a controller emulator. It's a controller emulator that takes a file that says, first press this button, then press this button. And that's all a replay device is, controller emulator. But there is an excellent question by uh, Misao Devil, who I know you've been watching for a while because you said, oh, I remember Master June's logo and the snake in Pong. That was actually the last SNES task that I'm aware of that used four controllers. Um, we went down to, we stayed with, or sorry, that one used eight controllers. I'm sorry, let me let P4 explain it. <laughs> The, the long story short is there were in the early days of arbitrary code execution our understanding of the way that the controller interface worked was a little bit different and partially that was due to the way that emulators worked at the time and using the eight controller interfaces was easier on the emulation side of things but as we developed the tools over time we were able to reduce that and Realistically speaking, these days you could actually say that we only use a two controller interface at the most abstract level because you only uh, you only have one controller you can pro program into each port anyways. But back in the early days, we used 
a multi-tap interface. Uh, and one of the key points is that due to the way the controllers are pulled, if we're trying to load a big game or stream video or just shove a massive amount of data down this controller bus, um, it is no faster nor slower to use eight controllers than it is four. In other words, in those two ports, we used to pretend there was a multi-tap in each. SNES has two physical ports. A multi-tap splits each of those into four. Four times two is oftentimes eight. But <laughs> to you... <laughs> To use um, just four of those eight controllers is the same speed. It allows us to transfer data at the same speed as using all eight. And so why use eight? It's the long and the short of it. So I think what Cosmix is trying to do is just to show how vanilla the engine is. All the glitch picnics you've ever seen in this game he can recreate it all. You know what might be interesting, actually, uh, P4? Why? I know the answer, but <laughs> setting you up here. Why is the Minus World different than the other versions? Oh, you know, it's funny. I, I, I'm surprised that nobody actually asked that when we were doing the questions earlier. Um, easy. The reason it's different is because there were slight modifications, like I said, the code to emulate the NES uh, video portion was in there, and that moved things around in the ROM locations ever so slightly. And because the minus world is reading from a specific portion of memory, that portion of memory is slightly different. Therefore, um, we're just going to get a different set of minus worlds um in fact while developing this payload i probably saw no less than 50 or 60 different variations of the minus world uh just every time i would change as little as one bite you could get in an entirely different minus world um yeah so there, there's that minus world can always be very different There's actually one question that I've been wondering myself while watching this. A lot of people commented on, oh, the color palette is different. Is that due to the fact when the graphics tile set was ported over? Or is that simply just because it will always look different being outputted from a SNES? Especially with whatever well, video mods he might have on the console. I'm going to say this right now. The Super Nintendo graphics format does not encode color whatsoever. It doesn't care. It just is a palette index. Um, if you're curious, the actual palette I chose was just, I'm pretty sure, ripped off of the uh, NES dev wiki. And I think I just used that. Uh, that's, that's actually literally it. It just the the NES renders color differently, so it's just going to look different, even though they're ideally mathematically correct colors. That you know the consoles are just going to render them differently, so they're just going to look different. Uh, yeah, yeah. If if Ace if Ace were possible in original SMB one then the ace would be possible here although there may be a few ca generally yes but there may be a few caveats to that yet if you aced to a game that could then be aced then yes but keeping in mind if you're if you're gaining such control of the console that you have access to specific memory locations then those could be in different places, and if you're on a whole different console, then the meaning of those specific memory addresses for, like, memory mapped I.O. could be totally different. Uh, I don't know if you want to add to that before. It, it is a bit of a tangent, but, uh, yeah, it's, it would be hypothetically possible, but you do have to remember if your ace in the NES used any hardware I.O., that's not going to be the same on the Super Nintendo. It may not work if you were doing it in this way. 
Um... <laughs> it kept the uh, fast music when I reset. <laughs> oh yeah, mm. <laughs> that's actually you. Could, you actually just brought up a very valid point. <laughs> Um, because the way I did the reset, I did not reset the sound engine. Okay. You could probably keep resetting yeah. the, uh, <laughs> you could probably keep letting it run out. You could get the audio going so fast, you eventually crash the sound engine. We'll crash do, percent. Yeah. Let's go. We'll do that later. Now it's reset. That would take a... Take what? Um, have people done this kind of thing with other games? Um... Absolutely. We've we've gotten Ace on a few different games. Uh, I'd say the Pokemon games are some of the most famous for it. The original Game Boy Pokemon games. Um, I want to say Castlevania Symphony of the Night has Ace. Um, it's just one of my yeah. favorite games, so I know that I learned the route for that. This is in the in the golden days of uh, sock folder. Even now new games are being found to have ace like just the other day they found a way to you know use this glitch in like oracle of seasons or ages one of the two um and paper mario 64 although both of those were special cases where they had to like do it in a different game to let it work in the other one kind of complicated but full-blown ace even in uh ocarina of time first ace on n64 just in the past I want to say a year, six months even. Um, yeah. A stands for arbitrary code execution. Also, fun fact about the um, about Paper Mario's arbitrary code execution. Sure. Uh, I actually met Strider Seven X at GDQ probably 2016, and we did talk about the concept of what of Paper Mario arbitrary code execution. And I'm not exactly an expert on N64, but I actually made a conjecture on that day. I said that one day we will, without a doubt, have arbitrary code execution on Paper Mario. I, I did make that prediction. Uh, and I stand by it. <laughs> We're, we, are, we are getting there to a more... Um, a better, more robust code execution on Paper Mario. So that's pretty cool. Um, I don't know if you want to play these or not, uh, Cosmic, but I actually have some prototype footage of the development of this ace uh, from when it barely worked and barely played on the Super Nintendo. Yeah, sure. But you just um, have like a movie of it? Yeah, I have there. I have them as unlisted videos. Sure. Yeah. Uh, let me just get to... I'm trying to get to 6.4 and test the lag. Yes. I'm excited for that. I really am. And I'm also excited for that video because I haven't seen these old videos either. This was like a year-ish before I joined the TaskBot community. When, when this was in beta, I guess. One of them, I'm actually going to be honest, would be a super cool way to play the game. Legitimately... One of them is a potential seizure warning, and the other one is just a progression. Oh, before I forget, someone asked about, you know, other games that have Ace. I mentioned uh, Pokemon games. Actually, one of the biggest and maybe most famous Aces that the TaskBot crew did, which we're both a part of, is when uh, Pokemon Red was total controlled. It was running inside of a Super Game Boy, which was then total controlled. I'm sorry, uh, Ace, the arbitrary code that was executed was used to basically gain complete control over the hardware in it. That so was, Pokemon yeah, technically that was Ace and Ace, yeah. Yeah, it was, that was, um, yeah, someone asked actually, if SMB, go ahead, go ahead. Let me actually be a little more clear. That was actually Ace inside of Ace inside of Ace, but anyways. Yes, it was. Right, because Pokemon Red got Ace to take to start sending specially modified, specially crafted commands to the Super Game Boy to cause an Ace, which was specially modified to take complete control of the Super Nintendo, uh, 
which then the payload that was eventually given was the what um, the <laughs> sorry <laughs> uh, <laughs> sorry <laughs> that just came over stream delay I, um <laughs> Yeah, one. It's a perfect recreation of the original game. Nothing. I secret. found. I found a glitch. I think. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's that's something. I got a lag frame in there, but more importantly, uh, we gotta try the others I... now. <laughs> oh my gosh. I mean, you must have, you must have, um, as the Game Boy version, everyone's favorite uh, Super Mario <laughs> Deluxe version says, if you blaze the Bowsers, um, <laughs> is that your first time doing that on this version? Blazing the Bowsers? Uh, yeah, that is. It's the, the first time Bowser blazing. I mean, that was something special. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Pro Noah says, phase two now. <laughs> Bowser's a multi-phase I gotta go see if I can fight a hammer bro in World 7. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually gonna have to look into what causes that. Yeah, I mean... Keep in mind, um... Until now, I mean, if, you know, I assume people have sort of played this version for fun a little bit. But to my knowledge, I don't know if any speedrunners have played this version until now. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think so. <clears throat> Man, this is my favorite hammer bro in World 7. It's my favorite trivia question. I always ask how many hammer bros are in the game, and this one counts. But maybe he'll actually finally be alive it'll, and truly in the game. It'll sure count today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. See, now, you know what I'm also wondering is whether or not, that, like, if you did it again exactly as you did the f that time, if it would happen as well. Or if it was, like, just a straight-up fluke that we got a blooper out of that. Yeah. <clears throat> we'll see. Forgot there's no fire in 7-4, so I have to backtrack. Haven't you played this game before? Maybe once or twice. <laughs> I'm stuck. Can't get over the uh, the blooper. Ow. That's so funny. We spent so much time explaining like. This yes, is this, this work. <laughs> yes, yeah. double jump works. Yup. Yes, small swimming Mario works. Yeah. It, come on, it's SMB one, and then just the blooper comes out. It's like, <laughs> hey guys, miss me. <laughs> the funniest enemy for it to ha happen on too. Yeah, I, of all of all the things that could have happened, uh, I think a blooper was like best case scenario. You know, I think I don't know. I think this is a remnant from your Mario thirty five shenanigans, Cosmic. Yeah, I think you're right. All your all your blooper parties are coming back to haunt you. Um, um Bowser's killed sprite looks like a blooper in in one world. I, I believe yeah, it's seven it's... different enemies in the seven different worlds. Yeah, so it turned into the right thing. It just wasn't supposed to be alive. <laughs> okay, let me play properly. Maybe. Maybe. Okay. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> so 
swear I'm taking forever to get here. That's okay, it's giving me time to look through the code right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of... Ha well, I don't know if happy is the right word, but... We found something that... I don't know, it's just kind of funny. Hey, look, I, I have no desire to sleep anymore. I'm pretty excited. <laughs> the showdown against Goomba Bowler. Wait, really, Louis? <laughs> Louis says he used to practice on this version. Yeah, no way. Really? Wait, I don't know if he's making a joke, but it yeah, would make it would make. I, I mean, well, huh. I'm hacked save states into this. So, did you save the ROM already like this? Did you download the version from castvideos.org? Bro. Oh, <sighs> oh wait. Oh, right. Yeah. God, there, there's so many different versions of Mario, I forget that, yeah, that won't work. <laughs> this is I mean, dumb. it works in Super Mario World, but not in SMB on Super Mario World. Yeah. I'd be curious, if not now for another time, um, what happens, let's say you do turn the Bowser into an actual enemy. What would then happen if you collapse the bridge with the enemy still alive? Like, would it do sort of the falling animation? Or, um, you know, I don't think it'll play the enemy. animation at all. That animation only plays if a Bowser exists. Right. Yeah, I guess... I don't know if that is still considered the right. browser. Yeah, yeah I, I, you're we'll probably have to see. right. It probably just creates a separate sprite. Yeah. Yeah. Good question. Oh Nasty taquito. Sorry if I'm pr pronouncing that wrong. Taquito, maybe. Um, if this is the case, what would happen if you fire kill the World Eight Bowser? Would just nothing happen, or would it spawn? Like, <laughs> Maybe uh, he'll stay alive. Enemy with her. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because his death sprite know. is just Bowser, so he might just live. <laughs> what if it created an endless loop? Yeah, uh, respawning Bowser. Uh, that would be interesting. Um, Little Brown asks what the development environment was for this. Um, so, at that time, I think. Well, actually, a lot of it really hasn't changed. Um, the assembler I use is one called Asar, A-S-A-R. Uh, you can find it on GitHub or SMW Central. The emulator of choice I use is LSNES, uh, developed by Ilari. It is not an easy emulator to use, I'm going to be bluntly honest, but it is a very powerful emulator. Um, I use a slightly modified version that has my own custom hacks built into it um, for development purposes. Um, and beyond that, it's a lot of custom tools, um, nothing particular other than, like, tools for disassembly, I suppose, would come to mind, uh. I'd like to add one of the main reasons LSNES is used is, to my knowledge, that, that runs created using LSNES are the only ones we've ever gotten to sync on real hardware. Real SNESs. That's not necessarily a measure of the accuracy, though, because it's just got to do with the way that LSNES processes things just happens to work much better for our formatting. Okay, he was alive, but <laughs> he fell. <laughs> 
So, the blooper is the champion because he can float. <laughs> Maybe the... Is there a cheap cheap? That might be the only other and enemy that's... And if it that's... were a cheap cheap, would it... Yeah. Would it swim like it's in water, or would it fall like it's one of those cheap cheap? Right. I don't know. Oh, man. Yeah, like, if I play to 8-4 and Bowser falls but he's alive, and then I grab the axe, does it play the bridge break with him down there? <laughs> I have to go try real quick. And silly question from a noob here, but how did you know it was alive? Was it just because he was right side up instead of upside down? Yeah, or, um, yeah. pretty much. He... He just didn't act dead. <laughs> he didn't act dead. Turns out he's not a possum. <laughs> like, he kind of moved. Or, like, I don't know. And, yeah, this oh, is... Oh, interesting. Also... Go ahead. When you defeat Bowser, there's actually a table, specifically, where it'll load the world number and gets his fake identities. That's pretty cool. You know, I... I guess I, did, I was never really well versed as this as a kid. I wonder how many kids actually caught on that those are all fake Bowsers before that in costumes. You gotta, you gotta read the manual, man. Talks all about the evil turtle tribe and their black magic. I'm gonna be honest, I don't even think I realized this until I just read the dang code. <laughs> <laughs> That's... <laughs> That's P4 plus 2's version of um, reading the manual, is reading the <laughs> Yeah. No, I, I, I talk about this all the time, where Mario is this game about, like, black magic, and that's literally the lore, but they never bring it up again anywhere except the SMB1 manual. So, like, in Galaxy, Bowser just, like, teleports and flies and stuff, but that, that's, that's the lore. They never explain it, but he is a warlock. I know most people know it at this point, but I still can't get over the fact that in in the SMB1 manual, it's like, oh no, all the toad people were turned into blocks. And like, what do you do the whole game? You break <laughs> all of the blocks. You, you're, you're literally killing toads through all of SMB1. So, what yikes. True lore is that the power-up blocks are the ones that are mushroom residents. So you eat them, you don't smash them. <laughs> oh, my bad. <laughs> uh, Sanic, just to be clarify a little bit, um, I never owned the manual, to be fair. Uh, I never actually owned the NES Super Mario Brothers. Um, it wasn't until much later when I played on Super Mario All-Stars that I ever had it. NES was actually kind of before my time in a lot of ways, but somehow I got sucked back into it. You're in the majority. Most people haven't read it. <laughs> Whoa! Bowser's invincible! Which is... <laughs> now he has infinite health! <laughs> <laughs> That's incredible, dude. <laughs> That's awesome. I bet I could keep the hammer bro alive if I killed him when he jumped or something. Man, that's so fun to play with. That's <laughs> what an awesome bug, I guess. Did you notice that when you killed, when you quote killed the first Bowser, it gave you 5,000 points and then the new one came back and he's like, now this is my true form. And then you weren't getting points anymore. Yeah, he, yeah, I don't know what the deal was. Like, he didn't have the proper amount of health on the dead one. Or maybe his health stayed at zero and then went to negative. I don't know. Or there was an interesting suggestion if it underflowed and went to 255 health, but yeah, I, I don't know if that's or there's an... I would actually say that almost certainly hmm. that's exactly what happened. You would have yeah. had to shot him with 255. It uh, happens with uh, Boom Booms in SMB3. Um, because what happens in SM, uh, looking at the code right now, um, I haven't quite figured out everything, 
but when a sprite is killed in this game, there is a routine call, um, init vertical speed and movement is called, and then it will store a value to the X speed, and that same value gets stored to a, a basically like an enemy state. And I haven't quite figured out why the enemy state is it's a live state yet, but right. um, the this this path is only taken when uh, Bowser's hit points hit zero, and because it's not actually spawning a new sprite, it's actually just transforming into a sprite, that means that its hit points would never be reset, so therefore it would be at zero, which means the next hit is going to go to 255, and you have to go all the way back down to zero. So it sounds like a problem for somebody like Happy Lee or Master Jun to task so oh. that we don't have to do it. Oh, <laughs> I I, th I thought that sounded like a challenge. For us. <laughs> but, but yeah, yeah, let's look at that video. Okay, so this was. Oh yeah, so yeah, go for it. I kind of posted a more or less in chronological chronological order. So getting there is almost finished. State. Oh okay, let me. I only noticed or saw the one. Let me grab the others. The first one, I careful caveat <clears throat> is it's pretty spastic. Um, oh yes, seizure warning here. <laughs> I saw a few frames it of is, it. Yeah, it is absolute <laughs> seizure warning. Um, so be careful. Yeah. Uh, if you have sensitivity to that. <laughs> this is sort of Super Mario Bros. <laughs> wow. So, what that the, what the green and red is is that's actually a CPU meter that was just like super hackily put in and it's overflowing incredibly badly. Right on. <laughs> I I don't even remember if I was able to figure out and make it to the next stage in that one. I don't think I could. Um, the rest of them are are not seizure inducing. Oh. Seizure warning is over now. Okay, fail yay. We got silhouette Super Mario Bros. This actually looks awesome. I know, it's uh, I, I I don't know if I ha actually kept a version like this. I this is like sick. <laughs> Other than the enemies hiding behind the background, it, it's like really cool. Nice. Okay, now I'm gonna grab the final one. It's just like you said earlier, there's no actual color data. This Getting last green. one. Green world. Did I lose you? So this actually demonstrates a really interesting point. When you actually jump, you actually spawn a sprite when you hit a block. Um, just for the those who have never kind of seen that kind of thing. If you notice that it's only the sprites have the legitimate color, so every time you hit a sprite, you could see it turn to the correct color for a, for a few frames. Mm -hmm. And you can see I was an absolute professional at playing this game. <laughs> you got 5,000 points. We're, we're good. Very good. Nice. Thanks for showing the uh, progression of getting it to work yeah anyways <laughs> uh, unless there was some crazy other questions uh, I'll try not to take over your stream here anymore because I think you want to <laughs> mess around with some stuff and <laughs> enjoy it on your own right now yeah I, th I think we're all we're all good people we mostly got stuff explained uh, if there's any final stuff you or Onosaurus want to say then feel free 
Um, the only thing I'll leave into the world is that I've kind of got a little bit of reinvigoration to work on this project again, and I have a secret version that I'm working on, and I will be sending that to Cosmic as soon as it is done. I have not told him what it is yet, and he will not find out until it's ready to actually go live. Uh, yeah, that is that is all I've been told, so now you know everything I know. That Some secret version's coming out, and I don't know anything about it, so that'll be fun to play with later. And and this is Onosaurus signing out. Please, if you're interested in uh, TAS playback on real consoles, then please go to the website TAS.bot. There you'll find everything from a list of console verified runs to hardware to software, you know, how to dump your own runs to to merch. There's, there's some merch, cool t-shirts. Um, and... Uh, I also do not know what this uh, run is, but P4, if you need me to, I will dump it and help him set it up on the replay device. Um, yeah, in addition to that, if you do the store without the slash Ona, it'll it'll show you the merch uh, store as well. If you're interested in getting a Taskbot t-shirt or anything. But um, yeah, that's all I got. Thanks for having us on your stream and hope, hope we didn't take too much time, but... Uh, no, that was fun. Yeah. And uh, if you find any other interesting glitches, <laughs> like when you're doing, if you're doing any of this off stream, please be, be sure to send them my way because uh, that would be super interesting to look into. Yeah. <laughs> that blooper <laughs> was incredible. That really was. Well, actually, I, I will leave with one other point because I know Cosmic like Smash Brothers, uh, Melee specifically. Um, without going into any of the specifics, but the submission list is public, so um, there will be a submission for SGDQ 2021 that we will be doing in the next few months, and the submission will contain some console verified melee tasses being the first things ever console verified on a gamecube we demonstrated some of it at a smaller event called task giving but this will be the first gdq if accepted that we would be showing this at so um wow that's a little sneak preview of things to come on on another front so right i i know in the past they like recorded monkey ball replays and then played them on console but this is like full-on to console verification is that right yes i could talk about this for two hours but the quick <laughs> version is is getting yes so that means that think about a regular game and all the different issues with the different clocks and this and that now add a spinning disc into the picture with variable seek times and variable load times and and yeah so that's been something that i've been working on for a while and I hope we get accepted. That's all I'll say for now. Cool. Thanks for coming on, uh, both of you, and especially thanks for helping me make this a uh, stream. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Uh, hope it was what you hoped for it to be. Yeah, lots of fun. It was. It was more than <laughs> we found some fun stuff, and yeah. Okay, cool. Well, have a good night, guys. Take care, everyone. Have a good morning, P4. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. See ya. <laughs> See ya. All right, everybody. That was fun talking to people who have played a much bigger part in making this stream happen than I have. <laughs> Just here to push the buttons. So uh, let's push some more buttons and try and get a lower time. And then, yeah. Try and get a 457 tier speed run and then we'll be satisfied and call it a night. Uh, yeah, push that. I need to turn it up a little bit. No, that was tons of fun. Uh, what I'm gonna do is, um, 
I'll take pieces of that and put them in the main YouTube video, and I'll say for, like, full technical explanation of this, and I'll link to my VODs channel where they can watch the whole thing, Unbroken. But yeah, everybody here got the royal treatment. They got to hear every bit. They got to see new glitches found live. <laughs> Alright, Ona, thanks. Have a good night. Hey, Giffy Squid. Nope, this is Super Mario World. <laughs> no hacking at all. Good so far. Doesn't ask me when manual talk about enemies. Don't die to fire. Uh, it says, careful, some enemies don't die to fire or something like that. And it's talking about buzzy beetles. Oh, maybe they were referring to the final Bowser. Yeah, man. They meant all the Bowsers as well. <laughs> Well, <clears throat> crash, the word crash the word crash kind of doesn't by the general public isn't like interpreted properly like mean a lot of different things but in general people usually just think like oh it broke it, like blew up and stopped working <laughs> but it's really just sort of interrupting the flow of the program in some way big or small and this is like Diverting. You like set up all this memory to look a certain way and then you crash the game so that it starts reading from that spot. And normally it would crash, but because you set up the game in that spot, then it, you get to play it. Okay, Bowser, do we get a good time? We do! Nice. I stopped the timer a little late, but 503. Very nice. That was about a mid 458 played run. Now I can start trying to get Bullet Bill Glitch, and maybe we can get the 502. 
That'll be a really good run on this version. <laughs> okay. So I want to make sure I start on frame rule 2. That should be good. Now we'll start going for Bullet Bill Glitch. If I could take this task file and then add the SMB1 task onto it and see what time it gets. Like, if you literally played <clears throat> the SMB1 task, it would be 459 maybe. And that's a low 454. Hi, Charlie. Welcome back, Ada. We're trying to get the legendary 502. Desync? No, no, I mean I manually write the the tasks. <sighs> yeah, all of the black screen loading transitions are slightly longer on this. Like right here. So all of those just add up. The 502 crew. Bad judges. Dang it, dude. <laughs> I don't think I can get <clears throat> bullet bill now. I don't know a setup anyway. I need to do like minus seven delays. <laughs> Something stupid. Please magically shoot. That would be pretty cool. Dude, I've gotten coin toss four times. <laughs> That's one in 16. Not that it would have been the run anyway, but bad judges, that was unfortunate. Add a one in four on top of the one in 16. One in 64. <laughs> we got no hands twice in a row. Come on. You can do it. Okay, good point, Miso. For the true speed run of SMW, SMB 1%, you would need to, uh, you would need to include the time setting it up, and I wouldn't be allowed to use the test input device, so... <laughs> what I need to do is get a way to manually, uh, build the payload, and then speed run the game, and get the time that way. <laughs> Thank you, Charlie. 
Yeah, I keep um, wanting to go check it, but then I'm like, I should check it on stream. So whatever post people made, then they get to see my reaction or whatever. And I keep forgetting. And I feel bad because I haven't done too much with that since I made it. I don't know. I want to do more with it. But I also am doing so many things that that site, which I never use, has kind of fallen to the wayside. <laughs> But yeah, go post funny things there, fan art, yeah, like art, or, uh, I don't know, just stuff. Take notes, Ada. Whoa. Code block, thank you so much. You gave some earlier. Thank you for another sub block. I don't know why I have so many subs. It's crazy. Thank you. Like, uh, I look at the analytics and I'm like, oh yeah, that day we got a bunch of subs, so I'm definitely gonna drop way down after that day. And then we have some other big day, and then instead I have like more than before. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> uh, have you watched my any percent tutorial, Fisher? I have a goals list ninja typist and it's on there under the maybe section. Is this SMB1, SMW madness? Well, I was going to say the game got confused as a joke, but people say that unironically a lot and I don't want <laughs> I don't want to spread the problem. Boo Fisher, thank you so much. I think you just need practice. Yeah, practice doing backwards jumps in 42 or 41 four, wide open space and then you can even do like this. Do a bump there, do a bump there, and then do a bump right here. That's the best, or like, easiest strat. You can still get 375, if, if you're fast. But even if you get 74, you're still saving 5 seconds, so you're, you're, you're doing great. Do a fourth bump if you want. Still save 4 seconds. Get a 72, it's fine. Come on, man. <clears throat> okay, from now on, all runs in 8-1. I will focus mucho. Welcome, Ryan Miller. Very cool. You're now on the officially cool list. As well as Master Flex. Cause cool people come to the stream. Four hundred eight point six. Nice. Thanks, GTA. So 
So I just need that run, but add bullet bill glitch. 457 with two frame, let's go. <laughs> Eight three Loki, the scariest stage. Uh, Eight three is the scariest stage at like casual or low speed running level, but at high level, it's really not. It's like one of the least scary stages, actually. Unless you're doing a race in like a marathon and you don't know what patterns you're getting, then yep, it turns very scary again. A3 is the hardest stage for casual. I believe it is 8-2. I think 8-2 is the hardest stage in this game. No, I think 6-3 was the hardest in 35, but I don't think it's the hardest in SMB1. Because springs were just so bad in 6-3, uh, or in 35. What am I doing? Scared of the cheap, cheap stages? You mean 2 3 and 7 3? Those, uh. There's a couple hard patterns, but if you know how to deal with all of them, like, 90% of them should give you zero trouble, and then 10% of them are like, hey, this is just a bit hard to dodge, but it's totally possible. I'm doing one frame rule GTA, so this should be 529 or whatever. What's up, Mr. McKay? Badoo, 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 badoo. <laughs> oh, dude. <sighs> Oh, hello. <laughs> Dang it. Don't fail that that trick. Although it does make sense. If there's anything I'm going to fail, it makes that sense that that jump would be hard because it, it's one of the few places you have to push left and it's like a really specific amount of left you have to push to slow down like perfectly. And yeah, playing on a different D-pad kind of messes me up. Could I do Warpless? Yeah, I probably could do Warpless. It's getting kind of late though. <laughs> Does the manual explain why there are pipes everywhere? Because they're plumbers, of course. If your main occupation is plumber, it means the whole world... What? <laughs> I found another glitch, <laughs> P4 plus two. <laughs> Although that's really the same thing as the uh, sped up music earlier. I just reset, I reset when I was underground and it didn't reset the music properly or something. I don't know. Why did Mario become a plumber though? Well, he was a carpenter, but Nintendo's philosophy is that he's the everything man. He does everything the average person might possibly do, so he's very relatable. It's 
So he switched around professions all the time. I don't know, man. I don't think I've ever seen that. You can do that all the time with a uh, Naki Tech Game Saver. I don't think Andrew has one, though. zoning in way too hard on the plumber thing. Point is that he was a carpenter and then he was a plumber and now he's been everything. He's played all the sports. Yeah, you can do flagpole glitch. Run. We're always doing another speedrun. But this speedrun is a game inside a game. Speedrunception. We're playing Super Mario World right now. I got bad judges that time. Uh, oh well. Yeah, I've always wanted to do Ace inside another game, so like, I think you can play Mario World on inside Smash Brothers Brawl, can you? Maybe not. But yeah, something like that would be so cool. It would be more convoluted though, and also the main problem is that it doesn't let you play long enough. Like all of the, uh, I don't think any of the games in Animal Crossing have Ace in them. Like they have Zelda, but it's not the FDS version. Wait, maybe it doesn't have to be. Maybe the FDS version is just the more useful one. Wait, maybe you could do some sort of Ace on the other one. I don't know. Um, there's also, no, I think that's the only one I could think of. Pretty sure it's required, okay. Okay, I hope I didn't just jump late and that's real good judges. Well, what I was wondering, ADEF, is like, maybe the FDS... 
So I know a lot of, like, part of the ace is affected by the music. So I was like, oh, maybe the FDS music just lets you actually get somewhere good, but maybe you could do a little, like, different ace on NES. I'm not sure. Maybe it's required then. Okay. Good shot, please. No. We'll take it, though. Please. Dude, I've gotten tossed every time. Five times. <laughs> Come on, dude. This is so stupid. Well, in your case, GTAs, you should use, uh... 538 or whatever I used, and then... You can eliminate coin toss completely. But on this, I don't know what's going on. How do you play this version? You get your... Super Nintendo hardware, your Super Mario World cartridge. Go down to your local Walmart, pick up your everyday TAS input replay device. And then you <laughs> play the TAS. Just kidding. You go to uh, is this a, someone like the actual store. Basically, you, you need you need very complex series of inputs to load this inside Super Mario World. And the easiest way to do that is to have an input device play them for you. You can get one on that site. We've, d we've, people come in every couple of minutes asking Maniacal, so you'll just have to wait for me to get it all on YouTube and then, or go back in the VOD and watch. <laughs> but yeah, it's... Arbitrary code execution in SMW. I down left. Oh, I did lose the frame rule. Dang it. Ah, hmm, what can we do instead? Dude, it sucks. It's like, even if I save, if, even if I did 8 3 flagpole glitch, I'm just back to where I would have been. Hope for magical bullet bill shot. Is there is there a setup for the 530? I'm just gonna make one up. Try again. Okay, we're doing it this time. I got baddies too? Oh, okay. What's up, Indigo? I'm doing good. Oh, 
I'll be honest, I thought this stream was gonna be about an hour long, if that. I thought <laughs> I thought I'd boot it up, I'd get a 458, and then we'd like, you know, explore a little bit. But now I'm like, huh, I wanna do bullet bill glitch run. And we also did a lot more exploring. So <laughs> Well, these are frame rules ADEP, so there's only 121st of the possibilities. But we do have names for frames. <laughs> will be like oh man I got I got 74 turnaround room and then the other day I got FFO save top step flag glitch with you, that's where you, you know you know everybody knows that's where you have to do the, the d40 inputs it's like yeah man Oh, and it, it really doesn't help that a lot of the younger SMB community, they not only talk about, like, practice ROM values, but they name everything weird things. Just like, oh, you gotta do Johnny Boy setup, and then do Blant, and then you'll Pogathy. Whoa. <laughs> like it was already kind of bad when we were like, ah, oh, I got bad judges. Ah, oh, I got coin toss. People are like, what's that? But now it's next level. <laughs> Frame ranking stream. <laughs> That's funny. Despawn spiny hit right side of third Koopa after stairs. Third Koopa after stairs. Is that the one after the second launcher that you run off onto? Oh, no, 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 that's the third of the bouncing. find or create anything unique for this game specifically um, I have for sure contributed a lot more to warpless than any percent I did find an 8-3 flag glitch setup but then you got fireworks and I didn't realize it and then someone took the same thing and made you not get fireworks 
And then now we're two, eight, three flag for glitch setups past that. <laughs> A warpless, I found like, ooh, here's a good way to do this Bowser kill. Ooh, here's a good frame rule route to get this time. D4 warpless in lost levels, I've definitely found a bunch of strats. Is really in SMW. I'm dead. <clears throat> Billy Bones? Like Bio Billy Bones? Do you know who that is? Are you them? Who are you? Are you related? Please reset. Okay. There's no reason to try it. <laughs> it doesn't. I would just. I down the the clip. I could do the clip to save time instead. That's what I should be doing all this time. I should be resetting in one one. To do flagpole glitch, and then not do this single frame rule save I'm gonna get from this terrible bullet bill shot. <laughs> but bullet bill glitch is a cooler trick, so I just wanted to do it instead. It shouldn't take this long. I literally hit bullet bill glitch about four minutes after booting this up for the first time. <laughs> like the other day with Onosaurus, because uh, he made the cables and we're like, let's test these cables. So we boot this up. I'm like, okay, let me mess around. And I just played through and did bullet bill glitch first try. And I have yet to hit it this stream. <laughs> Okay, we're all good. Don't die here. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna call it last attempt. Ethan. It's getting too hot in my room for this. You know, there's like a, a really distinct moment in about October when the weather changes and it just it just changes from like warm weather to cold weather. I think that just happened this week, but the other way where it changed from cold weather to Warm weather. Man, I do not. Ugh. I hate. I do not miss it being really hot in my room over the colder months. And it sucks when you're streaming because, like, you can't just turn a fan on. It's gonna be really annoying on the stream.
me to get... Like maybe I could set up a sound gate or something to cut it out, I don't know. Or like, are those Dyson fans silent? Maybe I get one of those, I don't know. Any silent fans out there? AKA lurkers. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> We have air conditioning, but I am in a tiny room with tons of devices generating heat. So it doesn't, and there's like one vent in, in here. Come on. Come on, you can do it. Okay. Okay, this is the run. Great minds think alike, Ethan. I was like very excited about that joke, so good job. That's good to know, yeah. I'll have to experiment with it. I definitely need one, like. With my current setup, I I don't think I can... Like, in the past, a lot of times I was getting home in the evening and streaming, like, two to three hours, but now I'm streaming more, and a lot of times it's earlier. I mean, even right now, it's almost 11 p.m. It's still super hot. But yeah, I don't think I will survive streaming... Unless I figure out a fan or something. Yeah, you could use L and R P4 Plus. Um, I think that would be good. Or even just to make... It doesn't need to be like... Hit them the same frame. Like if you ever hold them at all, that would be fine. I think it's just hard to hit those buttons specifically on the same frame. Okay, that's good. I guess after how much effort it was to try and filter out CRT wine, I just figured I couldn't do fan <laughs> properly. gotta do it we gotta make this the run we got good judges come on let's do it right here are pretty decent but I'm getting to the point where I don't care about it anymore so I need to do it right now <laughs> to the point where I don't care enough to keep playing I guess I think that point usually comes when it gets hot in my room like I never knew this until last summer there was a day when I was like why am I like so upset right now about speedrunning or whatever. I'm just like really not happy on stream right now. And I realized it's cause the room was super hot. Please, please, please. Yes, that was the lag frame too, I think. It flashed black. <laughs> that was awesome. Okay. Okay, we're on the 502 pace run, come on.
Okay, come on. 502. slow I hope it gets 502 please come on go Bowser please Potaboo please yes 502 let's go clip it and ship it we're all done <laughs> I honestly don't even know if that was fast enough to be like a 457 normally but it's really close either way like unless you know your stuff you wouldn't even know why that is like maybe a 458.0 or whatever we can find the time, in fact. We can find the Bowser pattern. I'm just glad we got that really cool bullet bow glitch with the <laughs> funky lag frame. Because it's hard to make lag frame happen on purpose. It's like less. It's like one in four chance, plus you have to have a specific score. So, I'm glad we made that happen. 